Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Looking forward to getting right into our Training Thursday show, where we are going to be breaking down a shocking statistic today on the average weight gain of your typical adult after the age of 25 years old. When I first read this specific study, and this is now a widely published peer-reviewed study, I couldn't believe it. But you know, when you step back and you actually look at it and you think about it from a clinical perspective, everybody you see in your practice and all the people dealing with weight issues right now, maybe it's not you specifically, but friends or family or coworkers, you can see why this is such a troubling statistic. So when I looked at it, I looked at it from the lens of what it would be like for someone to just be slowly gaining this weight each and every year and feel like they're not able to ever stop that train. They're not able to step off, stop the weight gain from coming, and then actually reverse it going back. So I want to look at it from that angle. What can we do? Why is it happening? But then also, what are the repercussions that if we don't, because we need a reason why. Sometimes, you know, we can just become a little complacent with where we are in life. But you have to look at it from the perspective of, 10 years out, 15 years out. And that, I think, means that we have to do the work today. And I'm going to be talking about this more on the next Mindset and Motivation Monday. But a lot of it, you know, what we want to accomplish later in our life or have later in our life, it starts today. I mean, it really does. If we want that longevity, that good health, the energy, the vitality, no joint pain, no inflammation, if we want that in our 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, we have to work on it today. We can't work on it when it's already started to break down. We can, but it's so much more challenging then. So let's work on it now today. And for those people that the weight gain has already started to come, or you've been working on losing that weight for years to come, I want to go over that today. Now, we've done many weight loss and wellness Wednesday shows, and I would love you to go back to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and check out all the previous WW shows. That is the weight loss Wednesday shows, weight loss and wellness, because weight loss always starts with wellness. A healthy body can't be overweight. And I know people try to challenge that, but it can't. You can say, well, I have thyroid issues. And I would say, I agree. That's one more reason for weight gain, but that means that the body's not balanced, that there are thyroid issues. And you could tell me, well, I have Hashimoto's. And I could say, I understand that. And I agree. Why do you have Hashimoto's? You have to ask the reason why. You could say, well, it's genetic. My mother had it. My grandmother had it. Well, I could say, okay, that means it's in your genes. But did you have Hashimoto's when you were six years old? Probably not. So why do you have it now at 36 years old? We need to go back and figure out why it occurred. And I know it's in the genes, but there's a reason why those genes got turned on and we can turn them off again as well. So I'm always asking why, and I'm always asking others to ask why. Because You and I will most likely not work together one-on-one. However, we can figure out your health issues together. Whether we run a lab together through equilibrium nutrition, whether you use one of my protocols, or you simply take the information and begin to live it. That makes me just as happy as anything else is having you get the results you want and then passing it on to others. So now on today's show, when I read the statistic, I'm like, ah, it doesn't really make sense. But then I looked at it and I said, it does. I get it. I see where they're coming from. And right now, what we're looking at, and I've given this statistic before, and that's why this is on a training Thursday. Part of this weight gain is from a lack of physical activity. Now, I'm not talking about just walking. You know, I'm probably the biggest proponent in the world of doing 10,000 steps per day. That will never change. It will never change. It's one of the blue zone reasons for uh, longevity. It's one of the many reasons. It is also one of the ways to turn on that parasympathetic nervous system, as long as you're not looking at your cell phone, checking emails. But another great thing, you work on your breathing, your relaxation. Here's the thing, though. It's weight training. We've forgotten about weight training. We've forgotten about manual labor. So I know that most of us, myself included, I don't have a job anymore 
That requires me to pick things up and put things down. I don't have that type of job. Most of us don't. But before just about 150 years ago, a lot of people's jobs, and I would say most, required a lot of physical activity. And we like that. And because we like that, it's one more thing that begins to fill up that rain barrel in terms of weight gain and fatigue, etc. Because you need to use those muscles. They were given to you for a reason. If you don't, they begin to atrophy because your body sometimes sees your muscles as detriment. And the reason is they require calories and calories are needed for survival and your body would much prefer to rely on less calories so that it can stay alive longer in terms of famine, etc. So that's why it slows metabolism and you can begin to gain weight under stressful conditions, lack of food, any macro would do it. But specifically, if you reduce your carbs for so long, you become, in, uh, you become uh, desensitized to them. But let's look at this though. The average person, I've given this statistic before, loses about five pounds of muscle after the age of, uh, five pounds of muscle per decade after the age of 27. So knowing that, we know that if you start to lose muscle, your metabolism is going to start to go down. And it goes down just from the biological reason that you burn less calories per day. Like that's one simple reason. And also, when you do exercise, there's less muscle requiring less energy. Not good for anything, right? You lose strength, you lose stability. Uh, When you get into your 50s, 60s, you're more prone to falls. And those falls can lead to hip fractures, which can then lead to rehab, nursing homes, and a lot of people that starts to where their body starts to go downhill and mentally as well, right? Because we need a strong mind as we age. So there's so many reasons for weight training. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. So we know there's muscle loss, but the statistic I want to bring you today is that the average person, the average person over the age of 25 gains more than 1.5 pounds per year every year into their adulthood. Now, the statistic actually shows closer to five pounds per year. So I was looking at this and what I saw when I went back and forth with different studies, let me, let me just give you the specific study that I'm looking at right here. This is just one. So this is a New England Journal of Medicine, uh, March 2000. That's almost 20 years ago, right? But still obviously holds true to this day. Uh, Average annual weight gain was closer to five pounds for men and more than that for women. Now, I've talked about this before because that's the average weight gain during the holidays from right around Thanksgiving here in the US, which is the essentially last Thursday in November, all the way through January 1st. So it's about six weeks where the average person puts on about five to six pounds. But when you look at it, the study went back and couldn't correlate just with holiday weight gain or keeping it off. But what it did see is that the average person is keeping on at least one and a half pounds of that per year. Most people keeping on more than that. I said, okay, Let's be conservative because I like to be conservative with these studies as well. And I said, even if the average person only gained one and a half pounds per year, and we multiply that over a decade, because remember, one year, no big deal. Pound and a half, you're not even really going to notice it. Hardly anything, right? But what if we take that over five years? 7.5 pounds. What if we were to take that over 10 years? We're going to get 15 pounds, right? 1.5, we'll do the easy math. It's 15 pounds. Now it's starting to creep up over 10 years. And you go from someone that weighed 130 pounds to 145 pounds. Or you go from someone that weighed 160 pounds to 175 pounds. That makes a big difference. Because 15 pounds on someone that, let's just say, is 150 pounds is a 10% weight gain. That's 10% more. And for most people, I mean, let's be honest, we're not talking about 10 pounds of muscle hair. We're talking about 10 pounds of body fat. And that's the issue because that body fat is not serving you in any way. As long, of co- as, long as, of course, you are a healthy body fat. Now, what is a healthy body fat? Well, I'd love you to go back and check out the shows on this as well. And we'll try to link them up if possible. Today's show is... Let's see, it's 1154. So stephencabral.com forward slash 1154. I'll try to link up everything for you right there. But uh, we did a show on BMI, and I would love you to check that out. For general purposes, it works for most people. Does it work for bodybuilders? Does it work for elite athletes? Probably not. And it won't work for like extreme Vata body types, extreme Kapha body types, but it works for 99 or more percent of the population. So let's use it in general. So 
You want to keep your BMI between about 19 and 24.9. Check out the show on that if you haven't looked at that. Those people, though, with above a 25 are considered overweight. Those people above a 29 BMI are considered obese. Keep in mind, two-thirds, at least of the U.S., are considered overweight. 33% of children are considered overweight, with about a, a little less than 20% now being obese, and adults now in the U.S. over a third are now obese. These are real serious issues. This has nothing to do with vanity. It has nothing to do with any of that, of what body type you consider to be you know, the best looking. We're not talking about that. We're talking about increased risk of cancer, increased risk of gallbladder uh, stasis or stones or blockages. We're talking about kidney-based issues. We're talking about type 2 diabetes. We're talking about high blood pressure, high cholesterol, Alzheimer's, metabolic syndrome. The more weight you gain, the more detrimental it is to your health. And that's why when I preach weight loss, again, I'm not preaching it from being super thin either. I don't think that's necessarily healthy. I see all of these people Get, trying to get super thin, doing like super low carb diets. Now, again, for those people that are, if you're really into seeing like your eight pack, I'm not going to deny that it can work for a lot of people. And we can, um, remember, I train figure competitors. I work with elite of the elite and I get it for general population, probably not the best idea. For someone in their early 20s, mid 20s, probably fine. You're trying to get that way in your 50s? I don't know. I mean, we have to look at catabolism. We need to look at muscle loss. It's much harder to get it back, but I'll save that show for another day. So what I want you to look at is understand this, that the more you go above really 10 pounds above your body weight, and I want to give you some statistics on this as well, the more chance you have for health-related conditions. And I want, I mean, this is the biggest thing. I've always said this is the, the tagline for the Cabral concept is change your body, change your life. If you get closer to a healthy weight, I'm telling you right now, everything in your life will change. You will have better mood. You'll have more self-confidence. You'll have more energy. You'll have less aches and pains. It's because of what you need to do to get to that healthy weight. Meaning that if you do something like the 21-day detox that we offer, you will lose the weight. But because of that, you're you're regulating inflammation, blood sugar, hormones. You're learning to eat more of a high antioxidant, anti-inflammatory plant-based nutrition plan. Like you're learning all of those things. And it's not dogmatic. You can do a little bit of meat. You can do a little bit of eggs. You can do, I mean, you can do these things and you can make it your own. What we're teaching though are essentially, listen, you can find a study for anything you want. Anything you want. I found a study for people and basically proved this. That those people that produce, the nations that produce the most dark chocolate have the highest incidence of Nobel Prize winners. How's that for a study? That is a legitimate study. But it shows you the insanity of studies, right, of research. We have to take them with a grain of salt. So I look at a lot of studies because I enjoy it. I really do love it. But I also have to say, what does this really mean? Like, what does this really mean? And then I go back to all of my studies, all of my mentors, all of the study I did around the world, the books that I've read, and the quarter million client appointments that we've done. And I say, yeah, but how does that match up in the real world? And if it does, and I can see the correlation, I look more into it. I say, okay, there might be something more to this. And so we look into that. Now, in terms of the weight loss, though, I'll tell you right now, my career started with body transformation. I mean, it really didn't, helping people do that. And along that way, I mean, again, I'm 18, 19 years old in college helping people that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s transform their body. And with that, they were telling me, I I knew nothing about this. Now, again, I'm 18, 19 years old. I'm not the healthiest kid myself, right? So I see people's blood pressure go down. They get off blood pressure medication. I see people's cholesterol come down. I see them quit smoking. I see them, you know, like all these things transform. I wasn't working on any of that. All I was trying to help them do was look better. That was it. Like that was my job. I knew how I knew about nutrition and I knew about exercise. And I studied in depth and in depth and in depth and I knew about nutritional supplements. I was really like that's what I just poured over because I was trying to get myself well as well. So here's the thing though. By helping someone get to a healthier weight and doing it through a whole food nutrition based plan, you help people get well. I mean like a lot of the times. That's why I preach to my health coaches, to my personal training team to the nutritionists I have, to our integrative health practitioners, help people get to a healthy weight first. We have three steps. Help them get to a healthy weight. There's anything left to work on for wellness. Let's work on that. And then we can talk about anti-aging. But people want to talk about anti-aging when they're 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight. Let, like, 
the best anti-aging program in the world would be to get within 10 pounds of your ideal goal weight. And I've talked about that 10 pounds before. That's the buffer we use. Five to 10 pounds maximum. Not 10 pounds for someone that weighs 120 pounds, right? Because that's way more to, to percentage. But if you're above 180 pounds, well, you could kind of have a buffer between that five and 10 pounds. Never want to go above that. Never, never want to go above it because you want to pull yourself back whenever you go above. I look at it as five pounds. Someone gains more than five pounds. That's it. The sirens start going off. There's a red alarm. It says, don't buy the bigger pants. Don't go out and buy new clothes. It's time to go and reset. That's it. For us, we do the detox. Seven days will help you lose that five pounds. Like you just do something like that. It doesn't have to be our detox. No, it can be your favorite plan. Just make sure it's healthy and make sure it works on the fundamentals. Make sure it works on a true elimination diet. Make sure you're using fasting. Make sure you're getting into autophagy. Make sure you're re-regulating blood sugar, all of those things. And then make sure that there's a maintenance-based plan so you don't just don't yo-yo back and forth. That's what I'm trying to preach. All right, before I go on too many tangents, let me get back to these statistics for you because- I was, I mean, again, see this every day in my practice. Yes, but it's something like, that's why you have to read and you do the research. You're like, okay, it, there it is. Like it's plain and simple. What we try to preach every day in the Cabal concept is this. I, I want to read this uh, basically word for word. According to the Office of the Surgeon General, as weight increases, so does the risk for death, especially in adults ages 30 to 64. Adults 30 to 64, it's amazing. Just 10 to 20 extra pounds Remember I said the 10 pounds, right? Just 10 to 20 extra pounds increases the risk of dying from heart disease and developing diabetes. Women who gain more than 20 pounds after age 18 double their risk for postmenopausal breast cancer. Let me stop right there. So at 18, 19, 20 years old, in your 20s, in your 30s, leaves you at risk. In your 40s, 50s, postmenopausal, double the risk of breast cancer. For everything that you do before that, so you have to understand is we don't just develop the disease overnight. It doesn't work that way. You're gradually filling up that rain barrel. It's one of the greatest discoveries I ever found. And that's why I titled the book that. It's because you don't have to be perfect, but you have to be more perfect than not, right? You need to be bailing out more of the water than you're putting back in. And if you're not, you're going to see those symptoms. And hopefully it's not as serious as cancer. But remember, top three diseases, right? We're looking at the cardiovascular. We're looking at diabetes. We're looking at stroke. We're looking at anything to do with the cardiovascular-based system and anything to do with blood sugar. And then the third one is cancer. But cancer is set to overcome all other preventable diseases by potentially the year 2030 is what they estimate, which is crazy. Because I'm going to do a future podcast on how cancer in 1900 was a minuscule amount of what was one of the top causes of death. So again, we need to look at what have we done different? Well, what we've done different is essentially destroy our environment, create toxins everywhere, manufacture hydrogenated oils, and, and just, I mean, processed foods, hydrogenated oil. People are trying to point to insane things like, oh, this one little thing did it. No, no, everything did it. Plastics, polluting the sea, mercury, heavy metals, spewing smog into the environment, you know, and then, and then you can look at, yes, the chlorine and the fluoride and the tap water, and you can go on and on, but it's not one thing. And that's why we do have to do our best to arm ourselves. Okay, so let's get back to that, what I was reading. So the Surgeon General says that for every two pound increase in weight, the risk of developing arthritis is increased by nine to 13%. In contrast, arthritis symptoms improve with weight loss, sleep apnea, Gallbladder disease, incontinence, and many other medical conditions can be caused by putting on extra weight during the adult years. And when we talk about other medical conditions, so, there, so that's the end of the quote. So now, now it's me talking. All right, so think about it. Every, essentially all of the diseases we have right now that we medicate for are inflammatory based. And the more weight you gain, the more inflammation there is in your body. Simply put, the more adipose tissue you have, the more endogenous estrogen you're creating in your own body, which is also creating more prostaglandin inflammation, et cetera. So when people ask about allergies and asthma and shortness of breath and migraines and et cetera, and they're more than 20 to 30 pounds overweight, I say, listen, we're going to run the labs. We're going to rebalance your body. But the very best thing that we're going to do is just allow your body, not trying, we're not going to even try. 
but we're going to allow your body to return to a healthy weight as we're rebalancing your body. It's the most important thing that you can do. And if they're always stuck like, well, which labs am I supposed to run? You run the starter kit. You run the organic acids test, which is going to give you some gut function, candida, bacterial overgrowth. It's going to give you your mitochondrial function, your neurotransmitters, your glutathione for your detoxification, your ketones and fatty acids. And it's going to give you your vitamin profile of your B vitamins, vitamin C, CoQ10, biotin, and N-acetylcysteine. And then it's going to look at bacterial overgrowth. It's going to look at ammonia excess. It's an amazing lab. And then you couple that with the hair tissue mineral analysis, which is going to give you your mineral levels, your electrolyte stress, heavy metals, amazing to pair together, right? So if you can only run two, it's called a starter kit. And we will try to link that up today if my team and I can remember at stephencabral.com forward slash 1154. So that gives you what you're off, like what your deficiencies are and how you're not able to keep up or eliminate what you need to eliminate. But the other thing is this, and this is really where I want to go to right now. So we already know that as we begin to age, we begin to lose muscle and our metabolism starts to lower, but we can prevent that now. And if you haven't been working on it, well, yesterday was definitely the best day to start, but today is just as good. We have today. It's all we have, right? So we need to get into an exercise program that helps to boost metabolism and stave off that atrophy, the sarcopenia, the osteopenia, where we're breaking down muscle, we're breaking down bone. We don't want that and we don't need that, but it doesn't happen just when you get to your 60s and 70s and beyond. It happens right now. And unfortunately, it happens for women about a decade earlier in their mid to late 20s. So let's work on it now. Let's start now. It doesn't, this should not be discouraging to you if you're 58 years old and listen to this podcast, nor 68. It means, sure, 10 years ago would have been great, but now is just as good. And don't let anybody tell you that you cannot put on uh, muscle and even build a little bone when you are older. We have the studies that show that you can. Now, are you going to be able to put on the same amount as when you were 18 years old? No, but that's okay. You're not 18 years old and you're not supposed to be 18 year old. What you're supposed to be is you and the best you at your age you're at right now. So what we want to do is make sure that we're on an exercise program that's at least two days a week, but ideally three days a week. What would those three days be? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And we're doing weight training for about 20 minutes. We don't need an hour. We don't need two hours. We certainly don't need three hours. What we need are 20 minute sessions where there's no fooling around that we're getting right into it, that we are training our body. You can start with just your own body weight. And I recommend starting with just your own body weight if you have not been exercising with weights before, because this won't overtax your joints. It won't overtax anything. It won't make you too sore. And if you're not used to exercising, just start with one set. Tune back or channel back to the previous Training Thursdays where I have many different workouts laid out for you. Okay, so we want that. We need that. Again, I I quoted a lot of great studies before. I always quote them. Uh, I'll probably continue to because I love promoting uh, our Boston-based people too. Uh, And I don't think that he's in active practice anymore. But Dr. Wayne Westcott already did the studies two decades ago that showed that two strength training workouts per week for people in their 70s and 80s brought back muscle, brought back strength, improved joint strength, mobility, et cetera. So it's there. It's able for you to just get right into. And again, you don't need to become a bodybuilder. We're not talking about that. Everybody, when we talk about lifting weights, is like, oh, I don't want to get too muscular. We're not talking about that. And like I always tell my clients and I tell my personal trainers to tell their clients, if at any point you feel like you're getting too muscular or too big, you let us know. We'll tone it back. But that doesn't happen because muscle is a commodity. It's not easy to put on. You want to put on some of that because remember, you're losing it as you age. And the more muscle you add, it doesn't make you look bulky. That's not it at all. A lean person looks lean and they look toned, but they don't look bulky. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about though is having now the metabolism to be able to burn calories on a daily basis. And it allows you to actually eat more carbohydrates because as you exercise and as you burn more, those muscles burn more, those muscles contain glucose and they need to refill their stores. Well, if they need to refill their stores and your liver needs to refill its stores of glucose, that means you don't store carbohydrates or sugar or glucose as glycogen or body fat, right? Any excess would become body fat. So that's the great thing. When you exercise, you actually have a little bit more liberal eating routine. So what I want people to do is check out the previous show on BMI, find out their BMI, find out their body fat percentage, make sure you're in the right range, and that you're within 10 pounds of your healthy goal weight. Remember what I said, and remember, the studies show it. 
Don't be 10 pounds. Don't be more than 10 pounds away from that ideal body weight. And you can even look at um, previous podcasts I did on waist hip ratio. That's an important one as well. Check out your waist tip ratio. I only have one podcast. I can only do so much in one show. That's why, again, we do a daily show. I hope you're tuning in. And I also hope that you're going back to previous shows at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. And stay tuned over the next couple of months. We're about to do something that has never been done in the podcast industry, especially in the health-based field. And you'll see what we do with the previous 1,154 shows to make your listening experience a little bit easier. So happy to also answer questions on this. And I would love to do a follow-up. But remember, the whole takeaway is this. Unless we're cognizant of it, unless we know about it, we're going to start to gain on average a minimum of one and a half pounds of body fat per year. That will be seven and a half pounds extra in five years, 15 pounds extra in a decade. So we don't want that. We need to keep it off. And remember, that's the minimum. Some people gain even more. And we can go back. We can begin to do the healthy things that will reduce the body fat, that will take it off. And I've done previous shows on that in order to turn back time, to literally reverse aging, to improve all of your biomarkers. And that is how you reverse aging. People say, well, how do you slow aging? How do you reverse aging? You get your markers as healthy as you were, or even healthier. Like in my instance, I don't want my markers to look like they were when I was 17, 18. I want them to look even better. So what you're doing is you want the biomarkers of on lab tests to look like that of a teenager or someone that's obviously at optimal health. So I'll talk more about this in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in. And of course, if this podcast was helpful, do feel free to pass along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or any practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.